Can you guess what I'm doing? You put your foot in your mouth? I'm putting my foot in my mouth. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm having to put my foot in my mouth a little bit. Okay, so I did the honeycomb uh, review the other day. And uh, I said, oh, it's the best joke in the whole world. I've never seen any such you know, sensitivity. It's the greatest school thing ever. It's all true, okay? That's all true. But people responded to that at YouTube by saying, what about the Yoko? And so I said, all right, fine. Let me, let me take a look at the uh, Yoko here. Because admittedly, I've never paid attention when using this before. Whenever I've used this before, I've been totally busy with the garments. So much so I've never even paid attention to the yoke itself. But now that I actually took a few seconds to pay attention to the yoke, I suddenly realized that a lot of the stuff I said about the honeycomb, this does just as well or better. Now, here's why this yoke never got my attention before. It's so dang boring to look at, right? It's just this kind of the cream colored case that looks like it came from 1985. No real buttons. This kind of ridiculous little logo. There's no like switches on it like there is. There's no light. You can't tell if it's on. I mean, it's just the most bland looking piece of hardware. I just figured, you know, it's just some sort of bland thing somebody threw together. I never really paid attention. But when you stop and pay attention to this yoke, you see a, a few cool little things. Like for example, Mike, do you remember the resolution of the, uh, of the honeycomb? It was like 3,000. No, it was one in a thousand. One in a thousand. Yeah, so, here, so what you do is you go to explain data output, and explain data output, you can turn, in the, turn on the joystick deflection. And you can see it to one part in 10,000. And the, uh, the honeycomb turned in a joystick resolution, it looked to me, from my testing anyway, to be one in a thousand. I just did a little testing on this to see how little I could move it, you know, just to get that resolution. This thing looks to be more like three parts in 10,000. Three parts in 10,000 instead of one in 1,000. That's three times the resolution. Now, who notices three parts in 10,000 versus one in 1,000? Does that kind of resolution even matter? I would, I would tend to think no, but... You I tend to think it. yes. I tend to think it does matter. And here's why. When you're doing like minimum controllable airspeed or a stall or something like that, you know, 5% of the yoke is going to be required to do anything. And so you don't need that kind of resolution at all. But if you're going at cruise speed, at high speed, at low altitude, and there's all sorts of, you know, pressure on the wings of the airplane that's going really fast... Absolutely. One part in 10,000 is the difference between, you know, the nose coming up or the nose going down. So, yeah, the resolution actually does matter. And so this Yoko, it's really boring. It doesn't have all the master switches, doesn't have all the light, doesn't have all the features of the honeycomb. But the resolution is three times better, and that absolutely matters for flying. Here's another way the Yoko is better than the honeycomb. The Yoko has more resistance as, as you move it through its travel. And at least in pitch, it has a little bit of a farther range of travel. It goes farther fore and aft. And when it comes to making those small pitch corrections, that absolutely matters. Having it uh, have a long range of travel is what lets you get those small little bits of travel close in. And the fact that the resistance increases the farther you move it absolutely matters because that's what makes it harder to make the full deflections. You may remember for the honeycomb review, I was like, oh, it feels like a lightweight little Cessna 152 at minimum speed, right? There's almost no resistance to it. Well, the Yoko solves that problem. It's actually got a resistance that feels a little more like, say, a Cessna 172 at kind of a low speed instead of a Cessna 152 at minimum speed. You know, it feels like a little heavier, solider airplane with a little more dynamic pressure. Another cool thing with the, with the honeycomb, the resistance does not change at all as you roll, but here, the more you roll, the greater the resistance. So the Yoko doesn't have the sleek design, doesn't have the little lights to let you know when it's turned on and working properly, doesn't have all the little master switches and key and lights that are all so cool to have. Um, but it actually has a little heavier, solider, better feel, uh, more resistance as you move it, and more resistance the greater it moves, and three times the resolution. So for just the hand flying part, letting aside all the buttons and design and stuff, for just the hand flying part, I'd say this is actually a little nicer, a nicer feel even. Now, oh, this is four times as much? Is that what you said? It was four times yeah, as much? Yeah, basically 1000 versus 250 Yeah, so $1,000 versus two fifty. dollars um, Worth it? Well, decide for yourself. Okay, so why don't we just take it for a quick little flight here. We'll get my, uh, my Epic LT and say, here's how we're going to see whether or not um, we really like that, that one part in 10,000. 
let's get this thing flying and let's see if I can hold altitude without an autopilot just with the yoke without doing, you know, like that. And if we can, then we'll know that we've got a, uh, a good yoke, okay, with adequate resolution. All right, so let's get, get a little air under our wings here. Do, do, do. Okay, and now we're going to kind of, let's see, do you, do you have the trim hooked up on this thing? Probably. Yeah, yeah. you do, you do. Okay. All right, I'm just going to use the Garmin for my display here. So we'll leave it on the external view here so people can see what's going on. And then we'll look at the Garmin for altitude. I'm going to go ahead and trim down. All right, about 170 knots is probably about as fast as most people are going to want to run. We will, uh, okay, about 180 indicated is probably about as fast as people typically are going to run this airplane. Let's back it on off to uh, about 1,000 pounds of torque, let's say. All right, so here's the question. At this kind of speed and altitude, can I make small enough corrections to hold altitude about like I would in the real plane? That's the question. And the answer is basically we're close to the real plane. Um, with the real plane, and I've flown the air, airplane for real, I can hold altitude just a hair better than this. But the real plane, uh, you can feel everything you're doing in advance, unlike the sim where you have to look at visual cues. You can't just see it. Let's just trim up just a hair. And then if you look at the kind of inputs I'm making here and data output, we're absolutely in data output here that is a few parts in a thousand. Um, and given our data output is showing an elevator deflection that's a few parts in a thousand, and I'm still not even really holding altitude perfectly, uh, I would say the additional resolution is actually pretty nice to have. So, so let me say that the, uh, the honeycomb yoke is great in all the ways I said, but if anybody says that the Yoko is even better in certain ways with, with uh, more precision and a, and a heavier feel and more resistance as you move it, then I agree. I am forced to agree. The, the Yoko uh, from just a, just a feel is even a little bit better because the, the honeycomb just feels a little light and the Yoko feels a little more heavy and solid like a real airplane. So that's my abbreviated Yoko review.